AutoGamerNode.com, and today I'm here with a review of a tile placement game. This one is Baron Park from Mayfair Games, designed by Phil Walker Harding. And in this game, players will be designing their own bear park, which is essentially a zoo just for different species of bears. And they'll be doing it by drafting differently shaped tiles, very Tetris-like, and placing them on a grid in front of them, expanding from one small board to multiple others as they go. They'll be filling up spaces, activating particular spots on their board, and earning the right to choose from the various different types of tiles on the main board. There are also some special goals to strive for before any of your opponents can achieve those first. Let's take a look at it, and I'll tell you what I think. So each player in Baron Park is going to start out with a very small grid for their park, and only by choosing tiles and laying them out properly on their board will they expand that park into four more of those small square grids. Every player will start with either an outhouse, a bathroom, a playground, or a food street. Now with that tile, they'll be able to place on their board on their first turn, and depending on what they cover up, they will then draw another tile from the center supply. If they cover up a wheelbarrow, they can draw from the first section with the smallest tiles. If they cover up a cement mixer, they can then draw from the bear houses in the second section. And if they cover up an excavator, they can draw from the largest and most lucrative tiles on the right half of the board. If at any time you cover up a higher value space, you can always draw from the smaller sections. Another important space on the board is the construction workers square. If you cover that up, you'll be able to take one of the two face up additional grids and place it next to your board, always either to the side or further back from your starting tile. If you cover up multiple spaces that grant different tiles with one tile, you get to take both or all three, depending on how many it is that you cover. And then you'll be able to save some for future turns because there's a chance that at some point you might lay out tiles trying to fill in squares so that you don't actually cover anything that gets you a new tile that round. So it's good to have some of those in reserve. You can also gain points by completely filling one of your grids except for the bear statue location, which you can never place a tile on. Once you've covered everything except that, you take the highest valued bear statue that still remains and place it in that spot. So players will be racing to fill up their boards and take the highest value bear statues. There are also three special goals in the game. Now these change for every game. There are a multitude of them and you select three at the start of a game. And when each player achieves this goal, they take the top tile denoting that they've achieved it. And guess what? The top tile is worth the most points. And that's a common thread in this game because the center section of the supply board has stacks of bear houses and the first player to take a particular size and shape and type of bear house will get more points than the person who takes the next one. So there's a race there as well. Players are racing for the goals, they're racing for the bear houses, and they're racing to take the bear habitats as well, which are worth the most points. And that's about everything for this game. It's very simple and very straightforward, but there's plenty to think about. The game ends at the end of the round in which one player has completed their fourth park tile. All right, so that's Baron Park. And this one was a surprise to me. I didn't actually even expect to get this as a review copy, but it came in one day, so I figured I'd try it out. And lo and behold, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's got a lot in common with patchwork in that you're taking these Tetris-like polyomino tiles and placing them onto a grid, trying to fill in as much space as efficiently and I guess as quickly as possible. And in this case, there are some more things to think about, not so much like the buttons in Patchwork where you have to purchase your tiles, but just in a spatial way. You have to cover up the 
particular squares that get you new tiles to use in later rounds and you have to enclose that bear statue and you have to try to get the particular tiles that are going to be the most valuable because they're the ones that achieve you some points on those three goals that come out each game and then of course you're racing just to get the first and most valuable tiles that are out there in that central supply and all these things work together for a really fun game and it's very accessible to a variety of gamers so this works in a family as well as with someone who's more of an enthusiast gamer and that's great now how does it compare to patchwork well this one accommodates up to four players first of all and it's deep enough that it still is you can get your teeth into it and have fun with it patchwork i think is a little bit more thinky and I think there's more depth to it and more strategy to it. But Baron Park is a great option for someone looking to up the player count in this style of game. And it does a really good job. I love the artwork, even though it's, it's not really great artwork, but it's quirky and it's bright and colorful. And I think that fits the theme really well. What I don't like is the way that these Bear Parks look when you're done. It doesn't look like anyone could possibly attend this park. It's just a mess. But, broken immersion aside, uh, it's a solid game, and I'm going to rate it a 4 out of 5, a commendable game on the Gamer Node scale. Baron Park from Mayfair Games and designer Phil Walker Harding. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Eddie Inzotto. Please do like this video and subscribe to our channel if you like this video and want to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell button so you'll see all of our videos as they come out. And follow us on Instagram at Gamernode and Twitter at Gamernode. And on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Gamernode. And of course, the Gamernode show is on iTunes and Stitcher, so listen up for us there. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have fun out there.